Cindy Tan is professor of biotechnology in the Department of Animal Science at the University of Connecticut. And I asked her whether there should be a law in China regulating animal cloning. Personally, I don't believe there should be a law covering just pet cloning per se. I think the industry should be able to self-regulate um, as long as uh, people adhere to common sense, ethics, and also there are already animal, animal welfare law that's in place. And if people adhere to all of those regulations, and that should be um, sufficient. This Chinese firm, Sinogene, predicts a huge market in China for pet cloning. Do you, do you agree, and do you think it will expand beyond China? I think they have very much the capability to expand beyond China. China right now has almost 75 million pets, and uh, there are many young people that are very passionate about their pets. So I think the market will be very big just in China alone. And then in neighboring countries, in Japan, Hong Kong, and uh, some other smaller countries, they would also have a need for cloning. Um, so just in Asia alone, I can see that this would be a big business. It's been more than 20 years since Dolly the sheep was famously cloned. Talk to us a little bit about the technology then and how it's advanced over the years. The technology has improved uh, tremendously in terms of efficiency. Um, if you recall, Dolly was the result of transferring 277 cloned embryos, and that generated one cloned animal. Today, uh, in very efficient cloning species like the cattle and goats, we can get 20% cloning efficiency. In other words, if you transfer 100 embryos, you get 20 animals born. Uh, in pets, it's not that efficient, but the efficiency has dramatically improved since Dolly's days. Do you believe that in terms of the cloning industry, we are still at the birth, for lack of a better word, of this technology? I believe, yes. The technology is just being applied in daily life, I would say. Years ago, it was mainly for research, uh, but there is sufficient uh, need for cloning, and uh, the technology has matured tremendously. So I think that it should um, allow people to use that in, in, their, in their lives. And you are, of course, the widow of uh, Xiang Zhang Yang, known in the US as Jerry Yang. Uh, he famously cloned Amy and other cattle. And he, and he wanted to clone human embryos to treat disease. But when the Bush administration banned funding in the US for anything related to human cloning research, your late husband turned to his home country, China, to continue his stem cell research. He wanted to build a scientific bridge between the two countries to bring these advancements sooner to the world. Uh, has that been achieved? Where does that bridge now stand? Um, unfortunately, um, he, when he uh, uh, submitted a proposal to the then premier, uh, Mr. Wen Jiabao, he became very ill uh, from cancer. He was at late stage cancer. So the idea of building a worldwide human stem cell hub was never realized. And uh, subsequently, people have uh, developed a newer technology that are less controversial. Um, the newer technology is called induced pluripotent stem cells. So the establishment of a human embryonic stem cell bank is no longer necessary. So the ethical problems of using human pluripotent stem cells is no longer there.